Hello everyone and welcome to the identifying source type for web sources video. In this video we're going to look at some strategies to determine how you can tell what type of source you have found when using a search engine. We all use search engines like Google every day and that's fine but one of the challenges in using them is that we don't always know exactly what it is we found. We need to know what source type it is partially so that we can cite it properly and partially because what type of source it is will determine what kinds of information it holds and other such things. I am going to run through a couple of different strategies here. The first strategy is to look on the page and see if it actually identifies itself for you. For instance, this first source, How Does Meditation Reduce Stress, is online, clearly. In the URL, it actually tells us it's a blog. So without doing too much further diving, I can know that this is a blog and that's how I have to cite it and evaluate it. Some other really easy ones are things like YouTube videos or tweets. Those are things that are in a very definitive format based on what platform it uses. Sometimes though, you need to look a little bit deeper. The next two examples are a newspaper article and a magazine article. Newspaper and magazine articles online look very similar to regular web pages. The best way to tell the difference is to actually look at the about page. Sometimes the about page is available at the top. Sometimes it's available in this little three line menu. Sometimes it's available at the very bottom. So you need to check multiple places to find it. For the Philadelphia Inquirer, they have a section called About Us and then a link that says about the Philadelphia Inquirer. From there, it gives us all the information about this publication, including its mailing address, switchboard, and different editors and writers. This type of information, while not directly stating that it's a newspaper, does indicate that it is a periodical publication. Otherwise, it wouldn't have a newsroom, a letters to the editor section. This one also shows you a picture at the very bottom of what the Inquirer looks like, and you can tell from that that it is a newspaper. A newspaper would be a periodical, not a web page. Similarly, for Time Magazine, they don't really have much about it at the top or on their three little line menu. So I'm going to look at the bottom to see if they have an about page. In this case, they don't. Sometimes that happens. Another place you can look to find out about a source is at their ad choices, term of use, or privacy policy. In this case, Time Magazine is a well-known publication. So even without knowing too much else, we could say this is a magazine. But for a lot of other publications, you'll actually need to check a little bit further. The next two sources I'm going to show you are both scholarly journal articles found online. Scholarly journal articles can be found online. Sometimes the full text is not available and they do look a lot different than other web pages. Sometimes these scholarly journal articles are in free government databases. This example from Eric comes from an education government database. We can tell that this is a periodical because of the publication information. It tells us the title of the periodical, Australian Journal of Teacher Education. It also gives us a volume number and an issue number. It also tells us in the record type that it's journal and it notes that it's peer reviewed. These are all things that tell us that this source is a scholarly journal article and therefore not a web page. For the second example, which is on Ingenta Connect, this is what it looks like if you go to a scholarly journal article on the publisher page. Some of that same information is there. 
If you look in the source area, it tells you the name of the periodical. It says that it's an international journal. It also gives us a volume and issue number. It also has a DOI. DOI links are things that are only used for scholarly journal publications. So if it has a DOI, that's a good way to tell. So we've talked about how to identify common web types and how to determine if it's either a newspaper, magazine, or scholarly journal article. Now let's look at a couple of examples that are websites and how we can tell. The first example is from Very Well Mind. Just like if I was checking to see if this were a newspaper or a magazine, I'm going to look for the About page. Their About Us link is at the bottom. It states that they are an online resource with a library of more than 4,000 pieces of content. So unlike the newspaper that we saw earlier, there's nothing about a newsroom, and unlike the other periodicals, there's no periodical title. That tells me that this is a web page, not a periodical. But if I go back to the Inquirer, you can see how at first glance they look pretty similar. Move this over. So you can't tell just by looking at the cover, so to speak, what each one is. The second example is from the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health, which is a government website. Here, the About page tells me about the NCCIH, their mission and vision, organizational structure, etc. But nothing about a periodical title or any kind of newspaper or magazine publisher. It also gives us some information at the bottom about who participated in this, and it indicates the publication is not copyrighted and is in the public domain. That is a normal statement for you to see on a government website or other government sources of information. So because there's no periodical title and we have that extra little bit of help, we know that this is a web page and not a periodical. I know this may seem like a lot, but as you continue to look at multiple different kinds of sources and investigate them, you'll start to find that this gets a lot easier. If you do have any questions or need any help, please email me and I will be more than happy to help you.